a sermon on the amount, the amount of treasures you should lay up in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thief cannot break in and steal, instead of laying up treasures here on earth where moth and rust can destroy and hyperinflation can break in and steal overnight virtually. But it's coming. I believe it's here. It's not just near. It's here. Here's the next one. Christ's apparition attracts thousands. You know, it is amazing to me. Somebody will pull up to their garage and on their garage door with their headlights, they'll see an image of Jesus Christ and all their neighbors are coming over and bowing down and worshiping their headlight image on their garage door. You know, you think that's silly and funny, but it's true. It is astonishing to me that the prophecy in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 is that the apostate church will not put up with or endure sound doctrine. In Revelation, we're told that they will follow the seducing of demonic spirits. In other words, there will be the, these satanic seducing spirits that will seduce Christians into believing things that are not biblical. In fact, not only are they not biblical, they are downright demonic. And this is one of them. And you see it all over the world. You know, when uh, there, there seems to be a, a real uh, uh, interest now in a lot of these paranormal uh, programs that you see on TV. Uh, when I'm on Channel 12 and I'm looking at the, you know, the direct, we have basic cable, so I see what is on these channels. And you've got medium and, uh, you know, a ghost something, and uh, I don't know what the names of them are, but it's just the, the, the television programming lineup is riddled with all of these paranormal uh, shows, you know, and uh, where they go into a house, and I guess the house is haunted, or there's alien, you know, things going on. Do you realize that UFOs are demons? UFOs are, oh, but my grandma who died 50 years ago appeared to me in my room. That wasn't grandma. <laughs> that wasn't Tutu. <laughs> you know who that was? <laughs> that was a demon manifesting itself as a seducing spirit, appearing as an apparition. You know, the scriptures say that Satan will appear as an angel of light. And so when you see these apparitions that attract thousands all over the world and right here in the United States as well, you've got to know and have discernment. God has given us a discernment of spirits. We can discern the spirits. And this is what the apostate church, according to the prophecy in the scriptures says will be rampant in the last days. And by the way, in this prophecy, we're told by the Holy Spirit, as Paul writes, that it's going to wax worse. That's kind of the, the underlying common denominator, if I can say it that way, with all of these prophecies, is that it's going to get worse. It's going to wax worse. Here's the next one. HHS funds gay sex education. I think you're all aware of what's going on even now in uh, California with Proposition 8. And what a, uh, a terrible thing that is taking place there. Well, again, the scriptures are not silent as it relates to homosexuality. We're told that as in the days of Lot, so too would it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Noah, so too would it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. You know, some Bible scholars, based on some recent archaeological digs, have determined that in Noah's day, same-sex marriage was legal. It was legal. Now, that's interesting. So what's the prophecy? Well, Luke 17, 28 through 30, Jesus said that it would be like it was in the days of Lot. It would be like it was in the days of Noah. And we're seeing that take place. And it really shouldn't come as any surprise. 
Now, let me just take one minute and say this, because I think it's really important. When it comes to homosexuals and lesbians and the quote-unquote gay community, I want to make it clear that our response is never to be militant. It is never to be militant. Now, I'm going to say something that at first might be a little bit hard to get your mind around, but do you realize that that transvestite, that homosexual, that whatever you want to, you know, call them and you fill in the blank, Jesus loves them as much as he loves you? I mean, he does not love you more. Even as a pastor, I have to remind myself when I see, and I've got close in proximity to me, uh, a, you know, number of these I think they've had sex change operations because they look very masculine. They've got facial hair and, and hair on their arms, but they have breasts, and it's just weird. But the Holy Spirit just convicts my heart and reminds me that God loves them as much as he loves me. He does not love me more. Well, wait a minute. You're the pastor, and they're wicked. Yes, but Jesus died for them just as he died for me, and just as he died for you. You know, Romans 2.4 should be on the refrigerator of every one of our homes. It should be written on the tablet of every one of our hearts. It's the kindness of God that leads a man to repentance. It's, it's God's love, it's God's mercy, it's God's grace, it's God's kindness that woos people to himself. It's not the justice or the militants of us as believers that wins these. I have never had the privilege of leading a homosexual or a lesbian to Jesus Christ by being militant. I've never, you know, stood my position, you know, this is sin, and ever had one of them say to me, you know what, you're right, I repent, what must I do to be saved? Never had it happen. Conversely, I've had the privilege of leading someone to Christ who came out of a lesbian lifestyle. And I've seen the transformation and the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives by simply being a friend to them, loving them, and praying for them. And it wooed them to Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's the kindness of God that leads a man to repentance. You know, when I think about if Jesus were here on Oahu, you know, where, where would he be Sunday morning? What church would he come to? Of course he would come to Calvary Chapel, Kaneohe. Come on. <laughs> we have prophecy updates. We've got food afterwards. He'd be here, I'm telling you. No, he wouldn't. He would be on the streets. He would be having breakfast and lunch and dinner with prostitutes and homosexuals and lesbians and people whose lives are ruined. Why? Because he's the physician. He comes for those who need the physician. And that's where he would be. Here's the last one, and interesting, especially if you've been coming to this church for any length of period of time. Uh, Ezekiel 38 has been a, uh, a prophecy that we've talked about uh, over and over again, and uh, they're six days away from pulling the trigger on a nuclear plant in Iran thanks to Russia. Here's the headline. Iran-Russia nuclear plant to be inaugurated in September, official. Actually, it'll be uh, now, some believe, even sooner. Well, there's a prophecy in Ezekiel 38. Uh, it's listed there, all of the nations by their ancient names. And would you believe that right there at the forefront, leading this alliance of nations that attack Israel with nuclear weapons is none other than Russia and Iran, who for many years now have had a mutual defense treaty. And now, thanks to Russia, Iran will have the bomb. Iran will have the nuclear ability to do what Mahmoud Ahmadinejad believes he's commissioned to do, and that is to wipe Israel off the map, which fulfills yet a host of other prophecies, not the least of which is in, in Psalm 83, where it's almost verbatim, this prophetic psalm that writes and records what they will say in the end of days. And it's almost like they're quoting verbatim Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. 
Come, they say, let us, let us uh, you know, wipe Israel off the map so that she is a nation no more. Depending on your translation, it's almost a transliteration of what we hear coming out of Iran. It's about to come to pass, exactly as God's word said it would. Well, let me bring this in for a landing this way. It is absolutely vital that there be two responses to these prophecy updates that we do every Sunday morning. The first response is for those who don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. The needed response is to simply believe in him. It's not a blind faith. It's an intelligent faith. In other words, God has given you an intellect, a sound mind, to make a sound decision. And that's what's required, is that you make a decision for Jesus Christ. Jesus, in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 29, said, And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. So when it happens, you'll believe. You'll know that this is the truth. Because 2,500 years ago, I had Ezekiel the prophet record a very specific prophecy with explicit detail that you are now watching the fulfillment of right before your very eyes. That's the first response. And I want to encourage you if you're here this morning, perhaps you've been coming here for a few weeks now after checking us out, see what this is all about. And you keep coming back. And you don't know why. You keep thinking to yourself, why, why do I keep coming back to this place? This guy keeps depressing me every single time I come here. Listen, that's the Lord ruining you for him. That's the Lord bringing you to the end of yourself so that you'll come to him. And your response needs to be that you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, here's a second response. And this is for those of us who do know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. The needed response is to purify ourselves. Consider with me the Apostle John in his first epistle, chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. He writes by the Holy Spirit, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. What does that mean? That means that you need to get your affairs in order. If you've got some unfinished business with God, you better get down to business. <laughs> you got some business to do. You got some loose ends that need to be tied up. You've got some affairs that need to be brought in order. Perhaps there are things in your life that have taken up residence in your life and they have no place in your life because Jesus, who is the life, is coming for you and those things need to go. And the Lord will put his finger on it and probably even now already has. And you know it because every time the Lord has put his finger on it, you've blown him off, you've shined him on, you've said to him, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. And yet, now is the time for you to purify yourself, get your affairs in order, and get ready so that when he does return, it's not for you as a thief in the night that you'll be watching and you'll be ready. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Bible prophecy. Thank you for your word, all the prophecy in your word, and more importantly, the impact that Bible prophecy has on our lives. Lord, I pray that we would purify our lives, ready our lives for you and your soon return. Lord, for anyone here at this service this morning who doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. What a great day to come to you today and then be baptized this afternoon. Lord, would you do it? 
we're asking you even better.